Talk Show. We are on episode number 15, and we're going to be talking about what can power ultrasonics and people working in that field, what can they learn from surface acoustic wave devices? Now, surface acoustic waves are, are definitely something that power ultrasonics folks, be it welding, surgical transducers, um, ultrasonic cleaning transducers, where you really need to get a huge amount of energy into whatever system you're working in at, in order to provide uh, in order to provide a a uh, a, a decent response, uh, you you are not using surface acoustic waves. There's just simply not enough energy there. But for very specific applications, there is energy, and there's a couple of things to learn from surface acoustic waves, and some things that we take for granted that we don't have to worry about in power ultrasonics, be it mostly where we either implement transverse or bending um, operation or longitudinal uh, acoustic. Uh, acoustic devices. So here are two ways you can get surface acoustic waves. And as the name suggests, surface acoustic waves are um, oscillatory waves, both having shear and longitudinal components. So there is oh, there, there is actually a wave, you know, kind of like an ocean wave, at least it looks like that, kind of a wavy um, uh, transmission. It's not bending. It's not simply just along the entire device or the entire um, platform or, or substrate is, is moving and bending. Rather, it's constrained to the surface. There are actually very specific uh, type of um, type of acoustic transmission. So it moves along the surface, and it's different than bulk. Or, or transverse bending uh, bending uh, operation. So in this ca the top case, we have a piezoelectric transducer. Um, it obviously oscillates at a certain frequency. Um, there are acoustic waves which are injected and those are longitudinal. Um, all right. So, but when it hits that interface in the surface, there's a difference and there's a refraction um, uh, which happens and that causes uh, some of the energy to be um, concentrate it and go directly over the surface in implementing shear along the surface. So exciting shear, uh, which then drives surface acoustic waves to another transmitter, uh, to another receiver, which then receives that waves. If there was some type of, um, if there was a, if there was a defect or if there was a, um, a, 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 a corrosion or any change in the surface characteristics and the surface acoustic wave would be very uh, susceptible to that and would lose in its amplitude. As well as if there was any tiny droplet, any sm very, very small amount of mass, it would be able to sense that difference uh, from the surface acoustic wave. Uh, one really popular application of surface acoustic waves, at least popular in terms of uh, research, at least at this point, is using surface acoustic waves and microfluidics to be able to manipulate particles very precisely. Uh, and not rely on bulk resonance because bulk resonance isn't precise. You can't control all aspects about it. Uh, you, you kind of, you just get what you get. Um, but surface acoustic waves are a little bit more tunable uh, than uh, bulk acoustic uh, transducers, which are commonly used in uh, um, you know, power ultrasonics. The other way here is to use an interdigitated electrode uh, which can then drive surface acoustic waves between two transducers and you actually hit time it exactly correctly you know with frequency uh, and the length in between these two uh, these two uh, transducers and it, it creates a pseudo resonance and I'll, I'll speak about that in, in the next slide. So here we have an inter interdigitated electrode where we have positive and negative voltages um, assuming let's just assume for this case that we have a spontaneous polarization upward. Uh, it's a little bit more complex when we're talking about the crystals that are typically used in the clean room processes from which surface acoustic wave devices are, are built upon. But effectively we get electric fields looping from one electrode to the other through the material constrained on the surface, who would have thought? And that creates actually a shear um, on, the, on the polarization. Uh, therefore we get shear waves then introducing uh, surface ac acoustic waves between uh, the two transducers, which surface acoustic waves are both have a uh, longitudinal and shear component, but they are, they're very much uh, concentrated, their energy is concentrated at the surface. So here is now a difference between bulk acoustics and surface acoustic waves. So there's actually two differences. I'll highlight one here, and I'll just talk about with my face in front of the camera the other one after I'm done. Um, 
So bulk resonance. We have reflective boundaries for resonance. And at a certain frequency, given a speed of sound, there will be constructive interference between the waves and we'll have uh, we'll set up a standing wave, you know, resonance in the um, in the resonator. Let's say this is a this is a rectangular sample. Sound waves can bounce back and forth with piezoelectrics. We can excite the sound as well. We don't need an external speaker, or external excitation source, and then we get a resonance uh, appearing due to that sound bouncing back and forth. For surface acoustic waves, we don't rely on boundaries to bounce sound back and forth. We actually have two um, devices. We have two interdigitated electrodes, and the whole surface is usually piezoelectric. I mean, the whole the whole surface, or at least the the whole the whole substrate is piezoelectric. So we don't really have to worry about mounting a piezo. We actually build, we print the electrodes on top of the uh, piezoelectric uh, crystal wafer, um, for example, and it then transmits surface acoustic waves in one direction. And the other one transmits in, transmits in the other direction. And if you time them correctly at the right frequency, you'll end up with standing waves. Similar to what we had for bulk acoustics, but the frequency and the amplitudes of these waves are controllable based on phase. For bulk acoustics, we don't have that privilege of shifting around the nodal point or anything like that. We don't have that controllability. And that's why one of the reasons why it's so useful for microfluidics is because you can actually move those pressure waves, hence uh, allow you uh, to move uh, particles through acoustic radiation forces. So the other thing that we don't, you know, us working in ultrasonic bulk uh, acoustics or bulk um, power ultrasonics, uh, we don't consider, and we're, we're, I guess we're fortunate in the fact that the waves we deal with, the sound that this, the, the modalities of sound transmission that we deal with are, don't have frequency dispersion. Uh, so based on the, the, the frequency applied, um, so based on the frequency that you're applying to your uh, device, you will you will then have a different resonant. Uh, so you will you will then have a different speed of sound. So the speed of sound is actually dependent on um, the frequency of excitation, and this is called um, dispersion. The fre frequency dispersion uh, of sound. This is something you don't have to deal with. You know, we always consider for bulk acoustics that this is the speed of sound. We got this V, we got our density, and we got our elastic compliance. We, there's no frequency component to it. Yes, frequency can be used to calculate a wavelength, and we do that. But we don't have that complex uh, behavior where actually the speed of sound is um, the speed of sound is actually uh, very closely is dependent on frequency. Uh, so that was episode number 15. Uh, please uh, let me hear your comments on this video uh, and also ask other questions. Uh, this was a, this uh, actually video was a uh, response to a comment. I'm going to get back to that person, let them know I have a new video up for them. And also, yeah, yeah, let me, let me hear your questions and I'm going to hopefully try to make this, uh, these series of videos, the piezo shock show, just based off of user questions eventually, but I got plenty of interesting things to share meanwhile. All right, see you in the next show tomorrow, episode number 15, and be sure to get on my email list so you'll get, uh, you'll get updates on when these videos are released. You'll also get a couple of notes, like the notes that I show in the, uh, in the slides here. You'll get those as well in the email. Uh, thanks for watching and see you tomorrow.